All right, guys, we got a new setup going on today. Um, let me know what you think about it. Uh, shooting with the GoPro again, but a whole new audio setup and everything. Actually, Dave set this up for me. Thanks, buddy. Wee. Wee. He's going solo right now. It's a gross rainy day, so he's going to stick in the infield. We're not going far. Um, but Rick is taking his wife Heather out. What's up, guys? Because it's her birthday. Hey. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. Um, beautiful day for flying. We're yes. Gonna, we're going to go up and explore the mountains and the incredible oh, landscapes of BC. <laughs> I don't know how far we're going to get. We're going to try and get out of the control zone. Let's start with that. Uh, if we can make it that far, we're going to maybe make it up to Stave Lake or something. Maybe go do a, a few circuits on the Stave River. I don't even know if we're going to make it that far, but we're going to attempt it anyways. This is uh, Rick's first time flying the R44, so that should be fun as well. Um, he's just going through a little passenger briefing right now yeah. so that she knows how to use everything and then we're going to get going. <laughs> I think that Rick should go to um, stay home with the kids and I'll go to helicopter school. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> she stays home with five kids, you guys. That's, that's dedication right there. <laughs> yeah. Or insanity. Or insanity. <laughs> one or the other. We'll go with dedication. How about okay, that? I like that one. <laughs> Positive reinforcement, right? <laughs> Heading west down oh, the river valley. So it's uh, lifted a little bit. We had to stay a bit low. We were about 750 feet coming out the northwest route. Uh, we're supposed to be at a thousand. Um, if there's clouds like that and stuff, you can deviate. You can. Uh, the tower told us that we can deviate our, our routing and altitude was our, our discretion. So that was good. Um, but now we're out here, and the ceiling has kind of come up. You guys can have a look here. Um, but there's some scattered stuff around. So we're gonna just keep working our way up Stave right now. Uh, this kind of stuff is easy to be dancing our way around. Um, it's not thick enough to really pose a lot of issues, especially as you can see over here on the right. Uh, lots of room to fly here, so we can fly around that stuff no problem. Um, it is looking, it's hard to say, around the corner might be good. It is looking like it thickens up up there, so we may not be able to continue there. But we're going to have a look once we get there. I, I have a guess that as we come up to the right, kind of the lake will be open. Uh, luckily, we don't actually need tons of altitude to make it up to the upper stave. We can just kind of follow the shoreline of Stave Lake um, all the way up there. And because we have some elevation here of clouds, then should be okay. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's good. What do you think? Uh, what's your first impression of the 44? It's definitely a little bouncy. <laughs> bouncy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think in the hover? Way more sensitive on the controls? Yes. And like uh, we were talking with Sam before we came out. And yeah. He wasn't helpful in making you feel any better. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> like, yeah, you move it this much and it's at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's not helpful. <laughs> it's not that bad, right? Yeah, no. Um, it is interesting. So you're six foot four, is that right? Six six. Six six, sorry. Yeah. Um, so have a look at uh, how he fits in here, you guys. <laughs> um, it's definitely on the snug side. I have but to the move one, this up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. The one nice thing I would say is the T-bar. The T-bar isn't good for a lot of things, but uh, it is kind of good for tall people yeah, because it kind of allows out. them to get it a little bit out of their way and then they actually have more freedom of uh, control, freedom of movement. Whereas um, with a standard cyclic, if it's in between your legs like that and your legs um, big, like long, then your leg actually gets jammed up against the instrument panel on the side and then it's actually hard to move it around. So you kind of lose the, you get restricted with your movement, whereas this one you actually have full travel still, so that's kind of neat. But anyways, Definitely. yeah, you see, and headroom, uh, you'd be snug to have a helmet in here. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see. Oh yeah, with a helmet for if sure. If you had a helmet, you had yeah. about one inch right now. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it'd be interesting. Uh, another guy that we know, um, Steven, he just got a helmet. Uh, he was trying to fit in, but he's only like six foot. I think he's six foot nothing or six foot two or something. Oh, really? I don't know. Maybe he has a massive torso or something. Yeah, but that's... he just got an alpha helmet, and he says he doesn't fit in the R44 with it. Um, so that's interesting. I'd be curious to see yeah. if he would fit in one or not. But Try uh, on different helmets. Yeah, exactly. How much thickness does you, would you say yours adds to your, top um, of your head? I don't know. I don't really think it adds that much. Like, maybe this much. But if I'm looking at your headset, yeah. it's really not a lot more than the headset. So I think Clear. you would I think you would fit. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe whack your head on the side of the door a little yeah. bit. But uh, you should try Sam sometime. Just pop it on and see if it kind of fits in there. Um, so at any rate, so um, it is opening up, but there is more of that uh, kind of scattered stuff. So why don't we just uh, deviate slightly to the right. We'll kind of go through that nice open area and then um, we'll work our way up. I don't know what it's going to look like around the corner there, though. Um, might be low, but we'll have a look. Look at this. 
opening right up, you guys. Beautiful. We got, um, I'd say the majority of the ceiling there is like 3,000 feet. And then we've got some low scud hanging around 1,000 here and stuff. But this is what we like to see. Wow. Happy birthday. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> This is nice. I don't know that we're going to get to the top of Mount Robbie today, but this is uh, better than I was expecting it to be. Very nice. We'll check out the Waterfall Palace up here. Ooh. This time of year, with a bunch of runoff, well, it's been raining a little bit anyways, should be a few waterfalls in here. Yeah, there's a couple. Oh. <laughs> Not as much as like in May when you get all the runoff, but it's pretty good. Yeah, there's some stuff hidden by those clouds for sure. Yeah. Be cool if we can see them as we get under. Yeah, deep. we'll get in close enough that we'll be able to see some more. Why don't you come to the left side over here and then we'll start slowing it down. We'll just get in nice and close and kind of curl around the hillside there we can bring it once we get up uh, near the rocks there we can be down at like 30 knots maybe a little slow right down oh. the ice falling there beauty Come in a little closer here. Looks amazing, eh? Awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, let's head up towards this one over here. Looks so awesome with the fog. I know, right? The, the fog actually makes it look better. If yeah. you look up there, it's like so crazy epic. That's good. And we got tons of power here, so we have no issues coming in nice and close. Keep your power up a touch more, maybe. Very nice. And a slight right pedal turn to get our way out again. Look at that waterfall going down into there, eh? <laughs> this is paradise, Heather. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice, and then we'll just do a gentle dive on out of here. Just so we get underneath all these clouds. Beauty. Nice work, man. Hey. Feel like 70 knots. <laughs> I know. This helicopter always feels uh, like it's going slower than it actually is. So. Yeah, the glacial runoff is amazing right now. It's just so green. So yeah, does it start coming around? Go ahead. Yep. Does it get a lot higher in the, the river? Yeah, in no. May with um, the runoff. It'll get a little bit higher, yeah. But not a it's, lot. It's come down a little bit already, but um, not tons, no. Yeah, so let's start extending it out a little bit. There's no beaches immediately here, so we'll kind of aim off over there. It's warm now as soon as that sun pokes out a little bit, eh? Yeah. This one's pretty rocky. Yeah, this one we can't do. It's going to go over to that one, see if there's any small rocks or anything on that one. If not, we'll hop to another one. But that descent going once we get past these trees, come in nice and shallow to it. That's so inviting, it makes me want to swim in that water. 
fully does, but it's probably freezing. Yeah, it's definitely freezing. <laughs> Straight off the ice. So, well, let's at least do a little hover work, because this is your first time actually, like, hovering this thing. Yep. So let's just uh, get it out onto the sandbar here. Okay. I'll just spend a couple minutes actually doing some hovering. See if we can get it nice and comfortable, stable. So the biggest thing is just relax your hand. You've got the hydraulics. So you should have to do almost nothing to that thing. You can just kind of, a couple fingers, three fingers, just nice and light on there. Same thing with the collective. You're just kind of keeping your fingers lightly on it. Don't need any major work at all. There you go, how are you feeling? Go over here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's go over to the left a little bit. Feeling pretty stable, pretty good. So it's always the first flight um, on a new type of helicopter. It takes a little while to actually get used to it. Um, but he's doing really good right now. Usually people are overcorrecting, um, particularly coming from a helicopter like the Cabri that doesn't have hydraulics. Um, it's a bit stiffer on the controls. You have the trim motor instead. Um, and then you jump in a helicopter with hydraulics. And it's basically like the equivalent would kind of be like going from a car without power steering to a car with power steering. I don't know if any of you guys, I'm sure lots of you guys uh, still remember the old non-power steering cars. Or have um, your power steering go out. Yeah, or have the power steering go out, exactly. Um, so if you guys have ever felt that, that's kind of the difference. So it's very soft on the controls here um, with the hydraulics, which is nice. But it takes a little bit of time to get used to as well. So, yeah. How's it feeling? Pretty good. Pretty nice. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. It, it wants to go. It, it wants to go to the right. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit of translating tendency. All right. So the tail rotor is trying to push it slightly to the right. Um, hence the reason on a North American helicopter, the left skid actually hangs low. So um, just to describe that for you guys, um, the tail rotor in the back is trying to push the helicopter over. Um, so it's actually drifting it, attempting anyways, to drift it to the right in the North American helicopters. And so we um, compensate that with the cyclic movement, which actually um, makes the rotor disc uh, tilt a little bit to the left and then that causes a, a, a rolling couple, basically, and that rolls the helicopter slightly to the left, which is why the left skid hangs low. Um, that's regardless of the, the weight and balance of the aircraft. So if we have more weight in the right side of the helicopter, it'll actually sit fairly level. Um, but if you were just, you know, standard configuration, uh, sort of equal weights all around, left skid would hang low. So that's why in the Cabri, it's opposite North American, or sorry, European helicopter, it's actually hang right skid low, that one. And that feels really good. So why don't we go for takeoff here? We'll just go up the river or down the river, and then we'll go find a beach that is uh, more open with smaller rocks or maybe some sand or something. That's good. So we're watching our power. We don't want to go past 25, 25 and a half. Don't worry, that ballpark is our max right now. We have a chart right here that tells us what the max is. Now it's important, we're doing a little bit of low flying along the river here, yeah. really important. Um, yeah, there's actually a good spot there if you start descending now. Uh, we're going to go to that mossy spot, that's actually really good. Um, I was like, oh yeah, it's a river, low flying in a river. Um, it's not advisable to do it in most cases. Um, this river here, we know this stretch of river really well, and uh, we know that there's no wires on this river, and so that's really, really critical because typically they'll string the wires kind of in between the trees and stuff like that, and uh, so it actually can become very easy to miss a wire and then fly right into it. We know this stretch doesn't have any. We always keep an eye out though when we do come in. So up over there, I don't know if the grass has maybe grown a little bit too tall now. Uh, let's go take a look. Yeah, it's definitely looking like tall grass. I think we're going to have to skip that one as well. Uh, but over on that next beach over, there's definitely going to be a spot on that one. Trees like this, we always have to watch out for the ones that are kind of hanging out over the river. At some point or another, that tree will fall. Um, the bank has been eroded away enough that it's Safe causing it to want to lead. Safe traffic, R44 X-ray Alpha, uh, along the west shore of Safe Lake. 
Yeah. This is beautiful right here. See those tiny little rocks right there? Yeah, kind of in front of that log. Uh, yeah, exactly. That tree there is leaning, but it's not going to, it wouldn't fall over this way. Just a little more left pedal there. Yeah. <laughs> There it's the opposite pedal. It's the opposite <laughs> pedal, yep, exactly. All right, that's beautiful. And just take your time, take it real soft and easy, stay relaxed on the controls, and fly it in. Small movements is a good thing. And there you go. A little bit of a seating check. A little bit lower, yep, you got it. There you go. Nice work. Woohoo! That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot in here. It is. All right, let's go for takeoff and uh, we'll go pick some new spots here. It's actually something interesting. So Rick and his family came up from the U.S. And um, I think a lot of you guys, if you're from the U.S., um, you may find what he's doing interesting. So um, in the U.S., the requirement for commercial license is 150 hours, whereas in Canada, it's only 100 hours. And um, so what he's doing basically is getting his Canadian license in 100 hours, and then he's time building um, the additional 50 hours. So in those additional 50 hours, um, I mean, we haven't really gone over super carefully of what kind of hours you want to get, because there's different things you can do at that time. You can get more PIC time, more nav time, more instrument time. Um, I think probably the most valuable thing for you, um, switching back to the U.S. license, is uh, to get more nav and instrument time, right? Yeah. So you're going to be working pretty heavily on those things, and then in the nav, we'll probably spend some more time in the mountains and stuff as well uh, doing that. So then, um, plan for you then is to go back to, well, uh, he's going to do it in Hawaii, which is pretty amazing. Go back yeah. to the U.S. Uh, why not Hawaii, right? Right. If you're going to fly somewhere, it better be BC or Hawaii, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and then how many hours are you, like, have you got it all figured out, What how many hours you're going to need to do? Um, th so the conversion is very easy. Uh, basically, you just go back. You uh, do a, a written exam, I believe it's a 30 question written exam, and then validate your license and that's it to actually yeah. convert once you have the 150 hours. Uh, but then in the States, um, typically the first job that you're going to get is an instructor and uh, they want you to have an instructor rating and an IFR rating as yep. well. Yep. Um, so basically walk me through quickly uh, what requirements that's going to take uh, for you to be able to switch back and get that. So the instructor rating is 200 hours. Okay. And so the I'll be going for the instructor and instrument. Yep. Uh, so CFII. Yep. It's stated in the States. Yep. So I'm planning at about 50 hours in Hawaii. Okay. But then, uh, you know, it may take more or less depending on how things go with the instruments. And right, stuff like exactly. Because you need, um, to get the IFR rating, you need 50 hours of nav time and 40 hours of instrument time. Um, so I think in the time here with us, should be fairly easy to get, I would say, at least 30 or more um, nav time and um, probably pretty close to that on, uh, on the instrument time as well. Maybe 25 or something on the instruments. Um, so that's good. It's going to be a long ways to getting you there. And then uh, with the rest of the time. And I think in the States, you can actually build, uh, if you have a safety pilot, you can actually build instrument and nav at the same time. Oh, nice. Um, because you can be under the hood doing nav Navigate. time and, yeah. and logging PIC, which is wild in the oh, States. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so the safety pilot um, is able to just be in there as a safety pilot. And funny enough, I believe he can log PIC time as well. Um, it's the strangest <laughs> thing to Dual PIC. Nice. Dual PIC, yeah. And then the uh, the guy actually doing the flying under the hood, he's logging instruments and nav and PIC. So, very cool. Um, so, I don't know if you, you guys, I'm going to do a, a whole video actually on that, um, breaking down the cost differences. Uh, with the exchange rate in Canada, you actually get a bit of a break there on the, on the rate, which is kind of nice. Um, I mean, you've probably worked yeah. it all out cost-wise. Going yeah, to, like, so in the U.S., there's, like, a whole spectrum of schools. There's, like, the ultra-cheap schools, which are just cheap, cheap for the purpose of nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that you want to know. Uh, but then there's the ones that actually look cheap. So um, per hour, their rate is actually looking very cheap. Uh, but then they don't tell you about things like, oh, you got to pay for fuel on top of that, an instructor on top yep. of that, and a briefing on top of that before and after your flight and all these extra things. So when you actually add up all the prices, um, I think it works out fairly similar to the sort of the mean, like the average school in the U.S. Yeah. Um, but cost-wise, did you feel like it was semi-equivalent to come up here and train? Definitely. Versus they, going down the States? So it? there's a school just an hour north of us, and yep. it's through a university. Yep. But it would cost $200,000 and take three years. What? Yeah. 200 grand? Yeah. Now that's <laughs> supported by government funding and okay, stuff like right, that. Right, so right. That's a, and that's it's a three-year program. Yeah, yeah. It's a little unusual, but right. most of the schools I called 
Yeah. They were very vague. Yeah. And they were also, you know, it's well, it's kind of up to you, you know. So the big drive right. for here, yeah, uh, besides getting to fly with you, <laughs> was uh, the clarity. Yeah. And so if you guys go look on the website, it's really clear on the pricing and the requirements. Right. And then there's a structure, so you know that you're going to be in class and getting so many hours by this time. Right. You're not going to take you four years to get your license. Yeah. And, exactly. And move on and get yeah, because you can you can do this in six months with us. So like the 150 hours, six months, you're done. Um, then you have a Canadian license and a U.S. license. You just go yeah. back to the, the U.S. and switch that over. So and, and it makes a lot of sense for come to the U.S. to do that because with yeah. the Canadian license, then you can you have license in two countries. Yeah. And it's not a hard uh, conversion. So exactly. Yeah. yeah it just makes a lot of sense actually. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. If you guys have uh, have any, any interest in that or any questions about that, uh, let us know. You can always email our school. Um, Lori would be happy to to help you out with that. Um, yeah. It's uh, maybe an interesting thing. I think one of the cool things, the U.S. has a lot of amazing terrain and, and great places to train, but a lot of the schools are based in areas where, you know, it's a lot of flatter terrain or they just don't have the variety of weather and stuff like that. Um, so to be able to come up here, uh, I mean, look at this. It's July 2nd, and look at this weather that we're having. <laughs> you guys are actually really lucky because typically in the summer class, you don't get a lot of variety in weather. Uh, maybe the first month is a little bit, and then that's it. Yeah. Um, but right now, July is still kind of a, a mix of weather, so it's really really fantastic you're getting sort of the bluebird days like we had yesterday yeah we we're up at 7,000 feet flying over the glaciers and then uh, days like today where we're piecing around the clouds a little bit and stuff as well um, so yeah working you know in the mountains in the you know different types of terrain weather um, turbulence um, all that kind of stuff I think it's really good so yeah pretty neat yeah it's awesome come do it it's <laughs> awesome yeah. you won't regret it <laughs> I didn't pay him to say that <laughs> That was for Tower, Helicopter, Robinson R44, Foxtrot Alpha Yankee, Quebec with information call. Alpha 44, Foxtrot Alpha Yankee, Quebec, how's your tower? Just off the west tip of Masquee Island, inbound for BC helicopters. Alpha Yankee, Quebec, identified wind 2503, altimeter 3009, or cleared inbound via the northwest route. Alpha Yankee, Quebec. Awesome. <laughs> good first flight, my friend. You Thank did you. very good, very smooth. Probably one of the better ones I've seen in a long time. It's just how smooth you flew it and stuff. Usually people are very kind of jumpy on it and stuff. So nice. really nice to see. I like that. Happy birthday again. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, always uh, hit that thumbs up button. That's really helpful. Um, subscribe if you haven't. I think a bunch of you guys are watching these videos and you're not subscribed yet. That's very interesting. Um, you can uh, you can hit that subscribe button and then you'll actually be notified. If you hit the little bell there, uh, you'll be notified when uh, new videos come up. If you guys like this content, you should do that. Check it out. We'll talk to you guys on the next one. See ya. Yeah.